In this video, let's discuss the solution to question 15 from the practice midterm exam for Calculus 2, uh, Math 1220. We're asked to show that the integral from 0 to 1, e to the x over x squared dx diverges. Well, you could try to do this directly. We really could um, by doing some type of like integration by parts. Um, we could do u equals e to the x. Um, we could then do du is then e to the x dx. dv is going to equal 1 over x squared dx. And then u is going to equal, um, we're going to end up with a negative 1 over x. Like so. And then you could try to rinse and repeat and maybe eventually get something out of that. Um, that might work, right? I mean, there's going to be more to it than that. That might work, but it turns out there's a much easier way. Because um, it talks about using a major theorem here. We're going to use the comparison test. And so what we're going to say is the following. If you look at the graph y equals e to the x, notice that the standard graph is going to look something like the following. e to the x, it's this increasing function, exponential growth, right? And so we want to go from 0 to 1. This function is increasing on this bounds. And so what we can see that is on this interval, we're going to see that e to the x is greater than or equal to 1. Great. Um, why that is useful is then if you divide everything by x squared, you're going to get e to, the, e to the x divided by x squared, which is a positive expression, is greater than or equal to 1 over x squared. And so this is a comparison uh, between two functions. We have a comparison in here. We have one function is greater than the other function. And so therefore, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x over x squared dx this will be greater than or equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx. And as we saw already, as we were trying to do integration by parts, this is a much easier integral. You end up with negative 1 over x as you evaluate from 0 to 1. Um, flipping the direction, you get 1 over x as you evaluate from 1 to 0. Uh, and then as you approach 0 here, you're of course approaching 0 from the right. Uh, you're going to end up with the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x. Um, when you plug in 1, there's no issue there. You get minus 1. Uh, but the first limit is going to turn out to be infinity. You get infinity minus 1, which is itself going to be infinity. This is indication that this series diver or this, this integral diverges here. So we kind of comment. So note that the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx, it diverges. And so therefore, we can conclude, thus, the integral from 0 to 1 e to the x over x squared dx, it likewise diverges. It likewise diverges. By the comparison test. Comparison test. And that's all that one has to do to make this argument here. So this is the major theorem that we were using, the comparison test. Um, we actually have to have a comparison. That means an inequality of some kind. You then show that the other, inequal, the other integral diverges or converges and make the comparison there. But I should also mention that the comparison test has limitations. Um, if you have two functions, let's say that f of x is less than or equal to g of x, like so. And so then that would tell us, that comparison right there then tells us that the integral um, of f of x dx will be less than or equal to the integral of g of x dx. Now, if the, whoops, in this situation, if the lower function diverges, that basically means that this thing is equal to infinity. Well, if someone's grown equal to infinity, that means that likewise it's infinity, and therefore we can infer that it likewise diverges. That's what we saw in this example. Divergence applies there. Well, on the other hand, though, if the bigger one converges, if the bigger one converges, that actually means that the bigger integral is going to be strictly less than infinity. Well, if the bigger one's strictly less than infinity, then the smaller one has to strictly be less than infinity as well. And that would then tell us that the smaller one converges. Like so. So the larger one being convergent implies that the smaller one's convergent. And that's as, that's as well as the comparison test can do. 
So the comparison test gives us these two implications. If the smaller one diverges, the bigger one diverges. If the bigger one converges, the smaller one converges as well. What we cannot say is that if the smaller one converges, we can say nothing about the bigger one because if the smaller one converges, that means it's less than or equal to infinity. But what's, what's, what's greater than a finite number? Well, a finite number could be or infinity, right? There, there's no inference there. And likewise, if the bigger one diverges, that means nothing for the smaller one. Because if the bigger one's infinity, we could be less than infinity or equal to infinity. And so there's no statement there. And so on question number 15, you want to be prepared to say something maybe about the comparison test like in this example here.